On a previous episode of Cranky Gun Reviews, I showed you guys this Remington Model 17 that I recently picked up. And I basically said that this was a orphaned, unloved, well-used shotgun that I just couldn't pass up. Uh, it's very worn out. You can see that there's very little bluing left on it. The stock is cracked. And when I got this thing home, the entire action was full of like a gunky caked up mud and unburnt powder residue mixed with gun, gun oil and things like that. So I stripped the entire thing down, took it all apart, cleaned everything up, and I got it in pretty good functioning condition, but it was still really ugly. And I decided that I wanted to do a little bit of work to this gun to make it much better than it was. Now, it took me a little while to figure out how to completely disassemble this thing and to get the magazine tube out. But with a hairdryer and a lot of patience, I was able to finally get the magazine tube out of the receiver. And I quickly began the process of cleaning it up. So I started by washing all the grease off of it. Then I used some rubbing alcohol to clean the oil and grease off of it after that. And then I used some steel wool to get it to this state. So you can see here that there's very little finish left on that magazine tube. I did a little bit of metal working on this thing to straighten out the end of the magazine tube. It had a couple of dents and it was kind of oval, so the shells had problems going in it. After doing some steel wool work and cleaning and putting one coat of gun blue on, this is what the magazine tube looked like. And I had gotten some feedback from a couple people online saying that the best way to do this is to blue it, use some steel wool and some hot, hot water, wash it down, let it dry, and then put another coat of blue on and then coat that with rub that with steel wool again and keep doing that a few times. So that's what I did in this particular process. So in this picture, I was up to two coats of gun bluing. And then by the time I was done, I ended up having three on it. So you can see how nice and rich blue that magazine tube is in relationship to the receiver on the gun, which still has basically no finish on it. So I ended up still working on the process. I cleaned up the barrel the same way that I did with the magazine tube little bit of steel wool, some soapy hot water, and then rubbing alcohol and put a couple of coats of bluing on that. And here you can see the process as I go along. This piece on the bottom is actually the end of the barrel that I shortened to make this a more desirable shotgun. You can see the original finish versus what the new finish looks like. And here again, you can see some during photos of how the receiver looks now and how the magazine tube and barrel looks. And again, here's all the parts side by side. But let's take a look at what the entire gun looks like now that it's assembled. And this is the quote unquote finished product. I still haven't done anything to fix the stock on this. And I'm still debating whether or not I want to try to glue this back together or buy another one. And as you look at the receiver, you can still tell that the bluing is very thin on it. You can still kind of see through it. But the magazine tube and the barrel on this look very, very good. They are 10 times better than they used to be. I'm actually pretty happy with this, how the way it came out, uh, just using Birchwood Casey cold bluing, again, taking my time doing three coats using steel wool in between each coat, and then reapplying the bluing after you wash it, and then also putting a good coating of gun oil on it. Now this looks just like an antique firearm and not something that was neglected and left outside for 20 years in the shed. And I don't think this gun was necessarily neglected in its life. I just think that because it's over 100 years old, or close to 100 years old anyway, it's a little bit used and beat up. So at least I've given it a second lease on life. Now that the action's all cleaned up and it's oiled well, the action works very smoothly. Now the action doesn't fall open when you push the slide release on this particular gun, but I can easily rack that slide with just two fingers or just putting a little bit of pressure on it with my fingers and sliding my hand forward and backwards. So I'm very happy with how the progress on this gun has turned out. It now has a 18 and a half inch barrel and it has much better bluing on it than it used to have. So the metal will be a little bit better protected now. Again, I'm still thinking about what I should do with that stock if I want to replace it or just repair the one that's on there. It has so much oil and crud caked in it. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get all that stuff out to get it cleaned up. So I may still just end out replacing it. And as you can see here on the end of the barrel, I need to put a bead sight on it. At any rate, I'm very happy with the progress I've made on this shotgun. I think it was money well spent. And now that it's all cleaned up, 
I can't wait to get it out to the range at some point and shoot it. I'm not really too worried about the crack in the stock getting worse because it is only a 20 gauge and I know it's there, so I'm going to be gentle with it when I shoot it. Thanks again for watching another edition of Cranky Gun Reviews. God bless America. Support your 2A rights. Get out there and shoot. And you remember, if someone asks you to give up some of your freedom for the greater good, remind them that freedom is the greater good.